Hi everyone, my name is Alvaro Martinez Sanchez, and in this video, I will be presenting our work in data driven assessment of our vortices in simplified urban flows. This project is part of a collaboration between KTH Royal Institute of Technology, the Polytechnic University of Valencia, and the Polytechnic University of Madrid. I would like to acknowledge Nicolás Pita, Adrián Corrochano, Soledad Leclerc, Sergio Oya, San Ricardo Vinuesa for their contributions to this project. The work is already published in archives. The link will be available in the description, and there you may find more details about the employee methodology and a more detailed discussion on the obtained results. So starting with the main motivation of this project, with the rise of population in urban areas, understanding how pollutants remain trapped within cities is of increasing importance. In particular, air pollution has been recently reported as the largest environmental health risk in Europe and a major cause of premature deaths and disease. Therefore, there exists an essential need to address sustainable development from an urban perspective, which is gathering the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Particularly, Sustainable Development Goal 11 is focused on the development of sustainable cities and communities through the promotion of sustainable practices that aim to prevent and sustainable accumulation of pollution and waste. However, the methods that we have right now are unable to provide the required spatial temporal accuracy to reproduce the pollutant dispersion patterns within cities. So in this sense, improved prediction and assessment techniques are urgently needed to address these issues and promote urban sustainability in the near future. In this study, our objective is to gain further understanding of the physics of the flow in different simplified urban environments to obtain new physical models that can be employed in the future for the prediction of pollutant dispersion patterns within cities. To that end, we analyze high fidelity data obtained from the simulation of the flow through a simplified urban environment consisting of two blocks of buildings separated by a given distance. And to perform this analysis, we employ novel model decomposition techniques with the final objective of characterizing the main spatial temporal flow features driving the motion in these type of flows. We also aim to relate these features with the main vertical structures, and in particular, we highlight the importance of the air vortex, which is the structure shown in peak in this figure, and which has important implication in the near weight flow of the obstacles, and therefore in the dispersion of pollutants in urban environments. This figure is extracted from a companion paper from the same authors, and has been recently published in Physics of Fluids, where you can find a summary with all the key results of this project. In terms of the numerical simulations, we employ data obtained from a well-resolved large eddy simulation consisting of the turbulent flow around two finite square cylinders, which represent two buildings separated by a given distance, which we denote with the parameter L. You can find more details on the numerical methods and the statistics of these simulations in the work of Adsori and others, which has been recently published in archive. So depending on the stream of separation between these two obstacles, we may find different flow regions. In this work, we focus on the classification performed by Oke in 1988 to analyze three different flow regimes. In the first case, we have the skimming flow regime, the regime with the lowest separation, which is characterized by a low interaction of the surrounding flow with the flow in the region in between the obstacles. The opposite case, the one with the largest separation, is denoted as isolated Ramnas regime, where the flow behaves almost independently around both obstacles. In the middle, we find the wake interference regime, which presents some shared features from the previous regime. And the objective will be to analyze the results of these three simulations and state the common and unshared features of the flow among the different regimes. Now we will explain the methodology that has been followed for the application of the model decomposition techniques. And this methodology has been extracted from the recently published book of Vega and Leclerc, where they introduced two novel techniques, high order dynamic mode decomposition and a spatial temporal Kuhnman decomposition for the analysis of a strongly nonlinear and high dimensional systems. In this video, we will go through the details of high order DMD, but more details can be found in the seminar shown here and in the book published in Elsevier, where you may find their corresponding MATLAB codes and some example of applications. So basically, the main idea behind high order DMD and standard DMD is to represent some spatial temporal data as an expansion of modes, 
which we denote as UM, with a characteristic growth rate delta M and a characteristic frequency omega M, and each of these modes are weighted by an amplitude AM. So to achieve this expansion of modes, the first step is to collect all our data of our system, which in our case consists of three-dimensional fields of the three components of the velocity of the turbulent flow around two finite cylinders at different time instants. Then we organize this data in matrices such that at every information of the system and every time step is stuck in the columns of a given matrix, which in this case we denote as BK. This means that since we are dealing with three-dimensional fields and for the three components of the velocity, the dimension of the columns of BK is usually very large when compared to a number of snapshots that can be employed. We introduce here as well the concept of the delayed matrix, in this case represented as BK plus one, which is a matrix which is shifted one time a step when compared to the original matrix BK. Then, once we have all our information in matrix form, we first apply dimension reduction using singular value decomposition with the aim of reducing the amount of noisy artifacts of our data. The SVD method decomposes the input matrix, which we recall has a special dimension J that is usually much larger than the temporal dimension K, into some spatial modes, some singular values, and some time coefficients associated to each of the previous modes. Since we are dealing with the velocity fields, these singular values are optimal in representing the flow field in terms of orthogonal modes run by their kinetic energy contributions to the systems. And if we introduce the concept of tolerances, the method is now called truncated SVD and allows for retaining only those POD modes whose energy contributions to the system are above a certain tolerance. In this case, N is the spatial complexity and represent the number of POD modes that are retained with the method. Once this dimension reduction has been applied, we can build the temporal modes matrix, which results from the combination of the singular values with the associated time coefficient of the modes. So after applying a dimensionality reduction to our data, we apply dynamic mode decomposition to our temporal modes matrix. And here we will state the main differences between the standard dynamic mode decomposition introduced by Smith and the higher order DMD method introduced by Lecklens and Beck. The standard DMD method uh, tries to approximate our spatial temporal data into an expansion of modes given by the following system. And the method seeks to obtain the matrix R, which begs approximate the delayed matrix BK plus one for the matrix uh, BK. This matrix R is known as the Kuhlman operator. And once this matrix is obtained, we can apply the eigenvalue problem to this representation of the system to obtain the main modes rank in this case in terms of amplitudes, frequencies, and growth rates. In the case of the higher order DMD, the method aims to model the following system, which is nonlinear. Therefore, this method is efficient when modeling systems that are highly nonlinear, which is the case of the present study. Here, we introduce the parameter D, which represents the number of Kuhlman operators that are approximated from the delayed matrix. And indeed, if this parameter is set to one, the higher order DMD would be exactly the same algorithm as the standard DMD. So if we apply this principle to the temporal mode matrix, we can obtain a more efficient expansion of modes from our spatial temporal data. And again, we recall that you can find more details about this method in the work of Lech Lange and Vega, where you may find as well many other applications of these methods, and in particular, how these methods have been efficiently applied to turbulent flow data. So this method allows to construct a spectrum with the characteristic frequencies of the modes and their corresponding amplitudes. In this case, the figure shows the spectrum for the three different flow regimes, and it can be seen how the method clearly identifies high amplitude mode for the three cases, with a frequency value between 1 and 1.2. We denote this mode as mode B, and since it is the one with the largest amplitude, it's the mode that drives the main dynamics of the system. We highlight as well another type of mode, the mode with the lowest frequency of the spectrum, since it's the one that first appears in the spectrum and the periodicity of the main physics is led by its frequency. Furthermore, we denote these modes are vortex generator modes as and vortex uh, breaker modes. 
Vortex generator modes are the ones that may relate to the mechanisms that could create the main vertical structures of the flow, whereas vortex breaker modes are the ones that break the main structures of the flow and could create the turbulent wake. Indeed, if, the, if we analyze the streamlined patterns corresponding to each uh, of the modes, we can see how A modes present flow structures similar to those of the R vortex, whereas B modes present some helicoidal patterns that appear to dissipate the appearance of the previous structures. We can further analyze these modes using the three-dimensional structures for each of the modes. In this case, we show uh, here the structure for the streamwise, wall normal, and spanwise velocity from left to right, and for both types of modes. For A modes, three main large size structures can be identified. In the streamwise direction, we identify a dome structure which runs and interacts with the R vortex by limiting its expansion and recirculating the flow inside this structure. In the wall normal direction, a structure with the shape of a cap is created on top of the first building, which interacts mainly with the roof of the R vortex. And in the spanwise direction, the most representative structure is a column on each side of the buildings, which affects the R vortex legs by creating some rotation of the surrounding flow. These structures are all shared by the three uh, flow regimes on the first building, but we start to see similar structures on the downstream obstacle for the isolated roughness regime, which is the one with the largest separation. With regards to the um, uh, influence of the generation mechanisms of um, pollutant dispersion, the most unfavorable features may seem to be the dome and the cap, since they could be connected with a delay in the pollutant escape uh, in the vertical direction. For B modes, three additional structures are identified, one for each velocity component. In the stimulus direction, we see a turbulent wake uh, that consists of high velocity current clusters on both sides of the buildings. For the wall normal direction, the high uh, velocity clusters appear within the width of the buildings. And for the span wave direction, some structures with the shape of a narrow head are appreciated in the area between the obstacles. In particular, these structures are related to the creation of a tunnel-shaped vertical structure between the building, as we have seen in the previous streamline patterns. For this type of mode in particular, the tendency of the streamwise and wall normal large-scale structures seems to break the current structures by creating some clusters that make the flow escape through the sides of the buildings, while in the spanwise direction, arrowheads may have uh, the flow and the pollutants with it to escape from the city in a more direct way. So this differentiation between vortex generating and vortex breaker modes can also be done using POD modes with, with which we can extract the most energetic modes of the flow. In this figure, we depict the spatial modes for the streamwise and spanwise velocity fields. And additionally, we show the frequency spectrum associated to each of the temporal coefficient of the modes which is obtained by applying the fast Fourier transform method to these coefficients. We can see how the first two modes have an associated frequency matching the one of the B modes identified by high order DMD. And they are characterized by high velocity streamwise fluctuations on both sides of the buildings, which are complemented by spanwise fluctuations aligned with the obstacles. Therefore, we identify uh, the vortex breaker process as the most energetic mode present in the flow field. And on the other side, vortex generator modes are related to the third and fourth POD modes due to the lower uh, frequency behavior. In this case, the stimulus component shows how a structure with the shape of a dome encloses the region in between the obstacles and it further develops into the wake. Finally, the fifth mode can be regarded as, the in, as an interaction of the above mentioned low and high frequency modes, which uh, yields flow structures resulting from the combination of such modes. So finally, to sum up, we have analyzed the results of a large eddy simulation using data-driven methods for three different simplified urban scenarios. We have characterized the dominant structures of the flow and we have identified two types of modes, which may have important implications in the dispersion of pollutants within cities. We identify 
vortex generator modes, which are low frequency modes, and vortex breaker modes, which are high frequency modes. These conclusions are consistent with those obtained by means of experimental data, which is available in the work of Monier and others, published in boundary layer methodology in 2018. So here uh, you can find our contact details and we will be very happy to discuss any questions you may have about this project. Thank you very much.